Hello and uh, welcome one and all. In this video, we will continue with Power BI series. In the previous session, we cleaned up our data model by combining multiple product tables into one. And I left you with an exercise to combine the customer, geography, and sales territory table. If you have gone through that exercise, then your data model should look something like this. We have a single table with customer, geography, and territory columns. And if you have not, then you can grab the M script from the GitHub to combine these three tables into one. I think our data model is in good shape and I have dropped the employees table. Anyways, let's move on to the next step, which is data transformation. Once we import the data into Power BI, there's a good chance that the data is not classified correctly. Power BI Engine does a good job to guess the data type and classification, but it's up to the modeler to check and fix if there are any issues. So we will move to the data tab and explore each table and its attributes. In the customer table, we have customer details along with geography and territory columns. We can click each column to see its details on the top ribbon. It displays the column name, its data type and format, and whether the auto summarization is enabled. Plus we have a data category and this list will be populated for numeric and text type columns. Let's look at the geospatial columns and see their classification. If you look at the city column, it is uncategorized at the moment. We can select this column and from the dropdown, we can select the city category for this column. This is an important step. Once we bring this column into a map visual and during the report development, then Power BI Engine detects this as a city based on this categorization and displays it correctly. We have other options for geospatial data, such as state, county, postal code, address, and country. We can select each geospatial column and classify it correctly. For example, we can classify the state, country, postal code, and region. While we have the customer table selected, let's go ahead and rename the columns. The columns we brought in from dim geography table have the dim geo prefix. Let's drop that along with dim sales territory prefix. We can right click and rename a column. I will rename the rest of the column offline so we can move on to the next step. We'll go ahead and perform a basic data transformation step. We'll click the add column option on the top ribbon. Let's provide it a name. We'll call it customer name. And in the formula, we insert the first name followed by and percent double quote. Let's give it a space between first and last name and percent again and last name. So this is the technique to concatenate two strings in Power BI. We'll go ahead and click OK, and this will insert a new column into our customer table. We have created our first calculated column in Power BI. Calculated columns work off of what we call row context. Row contexts perform an operation on the table one row at a time. In this case, it is combining first and last name for each row in the customer table. By default, Power BI will insert the column at the end. In the customer table, let's create our second calculated column. We will create the customer age. For this, we'll utilize the birth date column along with few built-in functions. We will call the year frac. The year frac function returns the year fraction representing the numbers of whole days between a start and an end date. Last parameter for this function is basis. It is optional and we will provide one for this optional parameter and one is used for actual. Let's go ahead and fix the birth date column and we will convert the result of this function to integer. So we will wrap the whole expression into an int function. This will return the age as a whole number. This column gives us the customer age. We can use this in our reports 
And based on this, we can create an age bucket, which will help us bucket customer into categories such as customer between the ages of 35 to 45, 45 to 55, and so on. The aim is to introduce various Power BI functions and conditional logic. To build this age bucket, we'll use the if else statement. So let's create a new column and call it age band. After equal, we will write our logic. We can go to a new line with shift plus enter key. We start with if keyword, open parentheses, single quote, then customer table, and we select the customer age column. We can type in the column name, or we can hit tab for autocomplete. We will check whether this column is equal or greater than 65. This will be our uppermost limit. If this condition is true, then in double quotes, we set the age band to greater than 65. This is followed by comma, and next we check the second condition with another if statement. If age is greater than or equal to 55, then the age band value is between 55 to 64. Let's copy this few more times. Below 55, we check if age is greater than 45, and if this condition is true, then the age band will be 45 to 54. After this, we check if the age is greater than 35, then we set the value to 35 to 44. All other condition, we can use the else, and we set the age band to 18 to 34. Just a note that DAX uses first pass rule. If the condition is true, we set a value, and those records are eliminated from the conditional check. We can go ahead and check the distinct values in this column to make sure our logic is working as expected. So if we click on the filter icon, this will give us a dropdown just like Excel, and this will display the distinct values. So this is our age band column where we group the customers in different age buckets. This will help us in our analysis later on where we can group customer by age and see which age range yields the most sales and who should be our target audience for promotional campaigns. The purpose of the calculated columns is to add analytical value to our data model. Our customer table looks in good shape for now. Let's clean up the product table next. In the product table, we can remove the word English from the column name since we dropped the other language columns. Let's remove the table names from the column that we brought in from category and subcategory. This looks much better. In addition, we see a lot of null values in the subcategory and the category column. We can replace the nulls with a text value, such as unknown. So let's go ahead and perform this step. We will utilize the Power Query for this. All the data ingestion process is performed via Power Query in Power BI. If you have worked with Power Query in Excel, then the UI will look familiar to you. We right click on the table and select Edit Query option. This will bring up the Power Query editor. We see our queries on the left. The selected table's data is displayed in the middle. And on the right, we see the data transformation steps we applied to this table. Power Query is very powerful and we can perform whole heaps of operations on our data using it. For now, we want to remove null values. So we will right click on subcategory name column and select replace values option. This brings up a dialog box and value to find is already populated with null. And we will supply it replace with value of unknown. And once we click OK, this operation will replace the null values with unknown. We can perform the same step on the category column to replace nulls. With these changes in place, our product table looks in good order. So we will go ahead and click close and apply. This will apply the changes to this table. Another thing we can do to clean up our data model 
is to hide the key columns. These columns are useful to join tables together. However, they don't really serve any analytical purpose. So we can hide them to keep our data model lean, especially in the fact tables. In the product table, we can hide the product key and subcategory key. So we can right click on a column and select hide option. I know it's not making much of an impact here, but if we are to expand the fact internet sales table, this reminds me we need to rename it to sales because this will be the final presentation table that end user will look at. So we want to give user friendly names to our tables and columns. So let's go ahead and do that now. I will expand the sales table and we can see a lot of key columns are hidden. This eliminates eight columns that we don't need to scroll through to look for a column. In larger fact tables, this can be especially useful. We only expose columns that are used in reports and dashboards. One more concept, we can create hierarchies in our data to support multiple level of analysis in a single visual. Power BI creates auto hierarchies for date columns. So we see year, quarter, month, and day. Let's look at the ship date. We can expand it and see the date hierarchy. We have different levels, beginning with year at the top, followed by quarter, month, and day. Following this logic, we can define our own hierarchy. And the product table is the perfect candidate for it. We have three levels in the product table. Product category, subcategory, and the product. We can right click on a column and select create hierarchy option. This will insert a new hierarchy in this table. Let's go ahead and rename the hierarchy to product. Expand it to see the columns in it. Let's add the remaining columns to it. We right click on the subcategory and add it to the hierarchy. Similarly, we can add product name column to this hierarchy. This will allow us to drill up and drill down and we can present data in a single visual at multiple levels. We will see this in action once we get to the report development phase. Similarly, we can create a hierarchy in the sales territory with group, country, and region. Group being the top level. From group, we drill down to the country and then to the region. Let's add one more calculated column before wrapping up this session. We will add month-year to our date tables. And for this, we'll use the format function. This function takes a date column, which in our case is full alternate date key. I don't like this name, so we'll go ahead and rename it order date. Now we can supply this column to the format function. This is followed by comma, and in double quote, we provide mm dash four y's for four digit year. We'll hit enter, and we can scroll to the right to see the new column. We can perform this exercise for all of our date tables. This will look nice uh, once we're creating visualizations. So if you want to display month and year, this will look nice as the access label. We will stop here for this session. We have performed a lot of data transformation steps using Power BI. We cleaned up our model, renamed our columns, created a lot of calculated columns for analytical needs, Overall, our data model looks in good shape. In the next session, we will review what we have done so far and start building a data analytics dashboard using our data model. So this series will give you a start to finish data analytics project with Power BI. So join me next time for the report development session. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.